afternoon, Redeemer family, and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on our epistle reading for this coming Sunday. The epistle reading for this coming Sunday is Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 15. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 15. <clears throat> Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the, the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith, in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them into open shame by triumphing over them in him. You know, <clears throat> this passage of Scripture is uh, one that, that calls on us to remember our Christian identity. You know, the very first thing that it says to us in verse 6, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See, verses 6 and 7 really lay out the fact our identity has changed. At the moment of uh, our time of faith, the moment of the waters of our baptism, we change. And that change means walking in him, living the life, doing what it means to be a Christian. And that also means that it's not just lip service, but it's in what we are thinking, what we are doing, the choices that we make, the things that we choose uh, to refrain from, and the things that we choose to be involved in. These are all the things that Paul is talking about here to the Colossians. And it's clear that you know, we need that warning today more than ever. And the warning starts in verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. See, it's a temptation to take on a world view that is not a Christian world view, a world view that maybe is a political world view, a world view that maybe is a, a secular world view, a world view that maybe is a, a world view that is according to other philosophies other than Christianity, or the lies that Satan has used to convince you of something else. And we see these all around us, and especially in you know, the, the screams about abortion rights and the screams about um, gender rights and the screams about um, all kinds of rights that are not in accordance with God's Word. And it's simple, very easy to buy into that you know, showing sympathy and, oh, those poor people, maybe we should listen, maybe we should. But in God's eyes, those things are still wrong. 
and we can't get caught up with the lies that Satan is trying to feed us by saying, yep, they're okay, because they're not. And so we're called to live in a Christian worldview, to act in a Christian worldview, to make our choices, our decisions, and our actions according to a Christian worldview. We have to you know, look at everything, uh, so to speak, through Christian colored glasses. And that's what our Lord is calling us to. That's what Paul is calling the Colossians to here in this epistle. He says, you know, going on, starting in verse 9, For in him the whole fullness of the deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith, in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. See, we're connected to Christ and everything changed for us, our identity right down to who we belong to. You know, Paul says in the scriptures, you are not your own, you are bought at a price. And that's what each and every one needs to remember as Christians. So, we are now Christian by baptism. Christian giving, having been given a new life in Christ by what he did as true God, laying down his life and giving over to death to set us free and to make us new by the power of his resurrection. And Paul continues in that line, starting in verse 13. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive with him, having forgiven all your trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. That is, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. See, he made us new. He made us new by taking the debt of sin, the great weight of our sin away from us, freeing us from it, and making us his children, calling us to be his own. So shouldn't we walk in that? Shouldn't we live in that? Shouldn't we make our choices according to that? Having been delivered, having been saved, having been redeemed, having been made new by Christ, Shouldn't we want to walk with him, walk in him, go his way, follow what is pleasing in his sight? That's what he calls us to. That's who we are as Christians. The very last thing, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. See, the, the day he rose from the grave, he first descended into hell and proclaimed his victory, making a public spectacle of all the enemies that stood against him. So why would we want to join with those? We're the losers. The ones who've turned their back on the victory of Christ. Why would we want to join with them? Christ gave us victory. Christ gave us new life. Christ gave us a new personhood. May we live, walk, and follow him. In Jesus' name, amen. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Open our minds and our hearts. Strengthen us, and we pray, help us to walk in you. Walk as you've called us to walk. Live as you've called us to live. It's easy to be deceived by a world that's bent on destroying itself, bent on going the wrong way, the way that it's opposite of you. Give us that Christian worldview and help us gladly, faithfully, and joyfully follow it to 
honor the one who gave us new life. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow on Thursday for tomorrow's devotion. Have a great day.